Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We have a bit of a different start with a box full of ponies. I hope you're enjoying spooky season. If you're new to the channel and you're very confused, <laughs> here are some previews of what we're going to make today. And the first thing we need to do is to find a good pony base. So we're going to completely change. <laughs> the goal is a pony with light blue skin. However, I get distracted very easily <laughs> and I love going through this box. I think we have a candidate that comes with some extra <laughs> elements inside. So as you can probably guess by the name of this video, we are going to do a Sally custom from Nightmare Before Christmas. And this is why I'm looking for a pony that has the skin color that Sally has. Now this hopscotch, which is by the way my favorite pony, <laughs> it's a UK variant, might also work, so let's see. Here they are, side by side. To be honest, I prefer the post on the right, but I feel the left one has the best color. So you might be wondering why does this pony have a hole? I will explain very soon. <laughs> For now, let's select this pony and get started. The base we are using today is from a pony called Princess Royal Blue, and in the UK she's actually called Princess Sapphire. Uh, the pose is the Quaker's pose, which we have seen once before when we did the Rapunzel custom, the most expensive My Little Pony in history. Not the custom, the real one. <laughs> now, why the hole in this pony? All the princess ponies had metallic symbols with plastic jewels, but in this case it seems the jewel was removed, stored inside the pony. <laughs> and as you know, I always try to repair ponies, but in this case Princess Royal Blue is quite a common one. She's about $15-$12. Pounds with perfect hair and perfect symbols, so this poor lady is ready to be transformed, I think. We are going to save these pieces though, and we're going to use them for something else. I, I had some plans for this pony for Halloween to add some lights to it, so we'll see if we can actually succeed <laughs> in my very um, ambitious plan. But for this princess, it is time to become Sally. So let's give her a good clean first. Now, I don't think we need to do all the washing and oxy and all the treatments I usually do to the ponies. I think it might be enough with acetone. Luckily, I don't have to worry about accidentally erasing the symbols, so I just have to be careful not to get rid of the eyes, <laughs> which we are going to modify anyway, but we're going to use the base. And let's just clean the whole princess. Alright, the next step is to remove the hair because we're going to obviously add a new one, the beautiful red hair that Sally has. And for this step I'm just going to use some clippers, some pincers I think they're called, I always forget. Oh no, pliers actually. And also some um, oh God, what is that? needles, um, pointy thing to push the hair in when the other two 
don't work. Time for the next step. So I want to cover these holes because when I add the dress, I want to make sure that there won't be any weird shapes appearing from underneath because I plan on using a very thin uh, layer of green stuff. And I'm going to use the standard millipad in this case, not the fine grain I use sometimes. It doesn't matter what color it is because it will be completely covered. And as you will see, I didn't do a very good job of mixing this. I had it in the box for <laughs> about three or four years, so I think it had dried off a little bit. But like I said, it won't be visible, <laughs> so all is fine. <laughs> Now for the slightly challenging, very scary, but also fun part, <laughs> we're going to create the dress. In this case, I want a very soft texture and something that is, well, I was going to say easy to work with. Well, it kind of is if you have the, the right accessories <laughs> at your disposal. In this case, I, well, I made some improvements over my Playmobil customization attempt, <laughs> which was very messy because the green stuff kept like sticking to itself and it was a nightmare this as you will see went a little better <laughs> but oh my god my hands hurt so much after doing this i don't know <laughs> i don't know if green stuff is supposed to be like this or maybe i'm letting my materials age <laughs> too much uh, I need to make more videos. But anyway, <laughs> I flattened the green stuff, made it all nice and smooth, or so I thought, because it wasn't mixed that well and there will be lots of bumps in the near future. <laughs> but let's see um, the dressmaking process and I will see you soon.
So once the dress has dried, it's time to sandpaper and file the result. We're going to try to get rid of those horrible bumpies. But I am not super worried <laughs> because the look we're going for is more ghostly doll rather than perfection. <laughs> Excuses again. So I will leave you with some scratchy sounds and more music. <laughs> Once we are sort of done <laughs> with the filing, we're going to prime the pony and to do this I'm going to cover the legs and the head with um, paper... tape? <laughs> words! Words today! And the reason is because I don't want to cover the beautiful original blue skin, which is why I selected this particular pony. And now the moment I have been waiting for since I came up with this idea. I'm going to paint the dress and I'm so excited. So a little clarification before we begin. The colors of the dress in the movie and on the toys that were produced after are quite different. I like the ones that are used on the toys. They're very lively, very intense and they give me all sorts of good feelings. <laughs> so I'm going to imitate those for this custom. I also think they go really well with the hair. And as usual, I'm going to use some acrylic paint and I'm also going to use acrylic pens because I want definition for the dress. <laughs> What? <laughs> Thank you. 
now that we have all the base colors it's time to decorate this was so so much fun i oh i really enjoyed it i'm going to copy some of the patterns that i can see on the sally toys and i'm also going to make up some because <laughs> i can't see all the whole dress and i also made some mistakes I think this might be my longest video so far. Quick note about the shoes, I look at different Sally images and I can see each toy has a different pair of shoes and the ones from the movie are a bit difficult to translate into pony feet. <laughs> so I tried a few different things and in the end, as you will see, I decided to go for plain black shoes with black and white socks because they are very Tim Burton-esque. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so painting the dress was fun, but doing these stitches was so much more, well, not, not more, it was just incredibly satisfying. For this video, I wanted to like push myself to try something a bit new, because I feel like what I do with the ponies, it's, it's nice because I feel like everyone can do it, it's very easy generally, but I want to get better at repairing and customizing. I thought, okay, I'm not going to paint the stitches for Sally, I'm actually going to try to recreate. My original idea was to actually cut the skin and then stitch. I thought, well, probably not necessary to damage the pony even more. <laughs> we can just do the stitching on top of the paint, which is how the toys do it. And I think it looks quite okay. And as you will see, it took me a few attempts to figure out how to do this more efficiently. <laughs> Uh, one of the things is that the vinyl from the pony, when you make a hole, it closes up really quickly. So if you want to put anything through it, you have to do it quite fast. And that was a bit challenging at first. And also this wire I'm using is very, very soft, which is great in a way because it's so easy to work with. At the same time, it's not strong enough to like push through the plastic or anything like that. But yeah, even though the first stitches were all um, uneven and I <laughs> scratched the paint off, I got better as time went on and I can say I'm quite happy with the result and I don't know maybe I will do a Frankenstein monster the next time <laughs> now I know how to do stitches and you know too So as I mentioned before, for the shoes eventually I decided to add the black and white socks, so we're going to do that and we're going to do a few final touches before we move on to the hair. I hope you don't find this video too long, if you do please let me know, I'm trying new things. <laughs>
finally, we are going to do the rehair. Some people past <laughs> told me that the rehair is their favorite uh, section of the video. It's the one I enjoy the least. <laughs> Making and also editing. I never know how much of it to show. I want to do cool things like matching the sounds of the needle with the sounds of the music and you know things like that and in the end I just struggle through it as I whine to my partner and listen to audiobooks. For this pony I was actually listening to a book called Shogun by James Clavell. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the name and it was written in 1975 and it's set in Japan in the 1600s I mostly bought it, well, first because I love Japanese history and anything to do with Japan. Hopefully I'll be able to go again soon and maybe make some videos. But also because it's like 54 hours long or something like that. So I feel it was very good value for my uh, credit investment in Audible. And I also needed a break from all the Warhammer books I have been listening to. The Horus Heresy, I think I bought maybe like 20 of them and I listened to all of them in a row. <laughs> It was um, The Expanse first, then Horror Heresy, and now Shogun, because Shogun is so long that it's the equivalent of several, several books. But anyway, maybe if you want to help the channel and uh, my trip to Japan in the future, <laughs> you can consider also joining Audible. I will leave a link in the description, just in case. Alright, so now I will leave you with the rest of the rehairing. Oh, just one quick clarification. This is not nylon hair, this is acrylic hair much harder to work with and it's not as good but it's the only one I could get like short notice um, because I didn't have red in my hair inventory like I thought bad planning but but And now the last section we're going to do the eyelashes. Sally has some beautiful eyelashes and this is one of the first things I knew I was going to do when I started planning this pony. Give it massive insect-like lashes. <laughs> oh and this actually, mm, it makes me think of Hunger Games and with the new movie coming out soon, hmm, maybe I can do a Hunger Games custom. <laughs>
we made it okay let's take a look at the before and here is the after so positive things first relatively happy with the result i like the dress and i love the stitches negatives the painting could be much better the shoes i'm not convinced about and the hair is very stiff i would definitely use nylon the next time but overall i'm glad to add this one into my little halloween collection and i hope you still enjoyed the video and gave you some good ideas to try your own customs if you do please feel free to share them with me i'll be happy to see what you come up with so again thank you so much for watching and i hope you have a great halloween and i'll see you in the next one bye bye